morning. Because um, how many of you listened to Voice of the Martyrs conference uh, Friday night? Yeah, Bobby and I did. It was good. very good. You have to. Yeah, it was very good. I mean, some of the things were things I knew. Um, but uh, I was so inspired by it, I just began to think I needed to change the message. And so let's read the scriptures and I'll get into the message. All right, who, I need volunteers. I will I'll read. read. I'd love to read. I'll okay, read. you'd love to read? I'd love to read. And who, and Adam. was, oh, Adam? Okay, was that it? There's two people? Okay. And Lisa. And Okay. All right. Uh, Michael, you want a big verse or a small? I'll, I'll do it sort of again. What? I'll start at the beginning. You tell me it's not. Say stop. No. I, you want a long passage or a short one? What? Okay. Um, okay. So you read First Timothy there. Uh, Lisa, you read Thessalonians. And I'll add the Hebrews, okay? Okay. All right. Uh, let's stand. Okay. First Timothy. No, no, wait just a second. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you, Lord, and I pray, Lord, right now, that you would bless the reading of your word. And I pray, Lord, that we would get out of this what we need to get out of, and that we would understand and know your ways. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, Michael. Okay, Timothy 4. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods with God, created to receiving them with thanksgiving to those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing be refused. It is received with thanksgiving. It is sanctified with the word of God in prayer. Next. First Thessalonians 5. Rejoice evermore in everything. Give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Hebrews 7. Hebrews 13, 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of the lips. Giving thanks to his name. Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, you want to send your Paulette? Uh, does she have a lesson? I thought I did. I thought I did. I thought I did. Okay. I left my glasses at home, so I'm going to have to do this as best I can. Um, First Timothy. Uh, is not really my main lesson, but I, I wanted to point this out. Uh, have you ever heard people say you shouldn't eat uh, pig yeah. or pork? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, okay. not if you pray for it, it's all right. I like, I like bacon. Burgers. Okay, that's where I'm headed, Adam. I'm not there yet. Uh, but you know, there's a lot of people that don't eat pork, and in the in the Old Testament, it is forbidden. A lot of people that don't eat pork don't realize that shrimp, lobster, and um, the catfish are also on that list. Oh, man. And uh, also included on that would be cheeseburgers. Ah, oh, cheeseburgers, man. Oh, no, I like no, cheeseburgers. Like we do not put milk products on beef. Right. That's darn it. And that uh, a lot of people don't realize that you know when you talk about not being kosher it's not being pure oh, geez, not sure. being fit to eat there's more than just pork and it it comes back to when the time of Cornelius when the gospel was first preached to him they went to Cornelius's house and in the <coughs> Greek world one of the main things they served on the meal was pork and then they would serve other things like catfish. And uh, they would have all these things, shrimp, and they would be serving them to people. And so if you went into a Gentile home, a non-Jewish home, you were going to be eating things or eating things that were cooked with pork. Uh, 
like beans. Oftentimes they have pork and beans, has some pork fat in it. Yeah. Uh, not as much as it used to be, hardly any anymore, but they used to put a lot of pork in there. That is, uh, that's the way that it was in Cornelius' house. And so, you know, Paul, Peter went there and then they served the food and he ate. Well, here's, he's, he's a Jew. And why did he do that? Paul came along and Paul said to Timothy here, he says, anything that God made is not to be, re to re be rejected. That's what it says there. If you read it, it says anything is not to be rejected. If, what do you, Adam? You pray for it first. Right. You say grace on it. So basically, uh, anything that would be kosher Jewish is not kosher for a Christian. Anything, anything that Jews eat is not kosher for us. If we don't pray for it. Because Paul says it doesn't matter what we eat as long as we pray before we eat. We have to bless the food. Please, our best. May I ask why we have to bless the food? Yeah, so that it's, it's okay to eat it. Otherwise, it's not okay. So really, for a Christian, everything's not kosher until we pray for it. And then it becomes kosher. I like the Christian way better. I like Christian. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, actually, yeah. the thing there, Shar, you had something you wanted to say? I guess. Actually, when I when when I was when 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 I, when I was in Pudgy's um years ago, when I when I actually was in Selena, a, a Muslim guy actually came to me and brought me some pepperoni pizza, and I said, "Why are you buying me that? Because you're Muslim." So he showed me in the Quran where there's a loophole where you can eat pork under certain circumstances. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm serious. Mm -hmm. I, I know it's not a holy book, but I just wanted to throw it in. Yeah, well, I... All right, you threw it in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I threw it in. <laughs> the, the thing there is, is anything's to be received with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Do you see how central... Thanksgiving really is to the Christian way of life, to be a thankful person. Um, you know, there's, there's times that you, well, my grandmother, I never knew her, she died before I was born, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of my grandparents died before I was born. Uh, all of them did except for my step-grandfather. Um, and so, she, uh, my mother and her brother and sisters and her stepdad and um, uh, mother were out in the field. They worked all day. And her mother left a few minutes early to start the wood stove and cook. And she went to cook something quick. And it's cornbread mush. Yum. Yum. They take cornbread and make it kind of like a cereal. Yeah. And that's what they had for supper. Could you be thankful for it? Yes. Yes. I love cornbread. That's nasty. No, no, no. It wasn't cornbread. Cornbread, cornbread mush. It's more well, like a cereal. The thing of it is, if you're hungry, you'll eat anything. It tastes a lot better when you're hungry. When you're hungry when you're hungry? Yeah, yeah the, true. The, the thing here is to realize we need to be thankful. And God, in America, we're not thankful for our food. Yeah, like Number McDonald's one, is not. We waste more food than, than they have in the rest of the world. We need to be a thankful people. And being a thankful people starts with what we eat and being thankful. Even if it sounds disgusting, who knows? Maybe it might sound good. Maybe. It's like a book. Don't judge a book by its cover. Exactly. Okay. Right. But the ideal there is the thankfulness. That is what God is looking for, and it's what God is expecting of us. It's to be a thankful people when it comes to our food and everything in our lives. I was talking about the voice of the martyrs in their conference. They had a uh, uh, Andrew Bunston, is that his name? Andrew Bunston? Yeah. Uh, the 
doesn't sound right. But anyway, he was a, a pastor. He was an American that pastored in Turkey for 20 years or more than 20 years. And he had been pastoring in Turkey a long time. Uh, there was a coup that tried to take over the government, and uh, they failed at it. <coughs> well, when they failed at taking it out over, uh, the president, or the uh, almost dictator of Turkey, began to take opportunity to get rid of people. And he accused... Pastor Brunston of being a part of the coup. Well, he wasn't part of the coup. He was a pastor. He wasn't involved in politics. He was just pastoring the church. But they arrested him for that. And he went to um, prison. And they went to prison. He was not charged with one count, but charged with two counts. And the sentence for that count was uh, life in prison. And they didn't have a death penalty for him, but they were going to have, they have a double life sentence. When was he going to get out? Never. 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 They put him in a cell with some people from ISIS. What do you think ISIS thinks of Christian pastors? They want to kill them. They want to kill them and get a reward. Uh, yeah, and but uh, well, they were in prison, so they wouldn't be getting a reward. But well, when they think if they kill, yeah. oh, okay. they get that's so weird. many virgins in heaven, they think yeah. they're going to so that weird. reward. Yeah. Yes. That's weird. But he he was under a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't you. And uh, they they did move into another cell eventually. That's nice. But that's he was nice. in this, and he did he was in a group with a lot of other people. Uh, like 12 people, others, and it was a cell like made for eight, but they had 12 people in there. And somebody probably had to, well, they all went <laughs> on the floor. Nice but it, it was not nice, it was not comfortable, it was not, you couldn't do walking around and doing things because if you did that, you're going to be bumping into people. And um, had to be very careful the way he did things. Because they wanted, they would cut out his tongue or whatever they wanted to do oh, if they got a chance. Um, and so here he was in this, in this prison. And God spoke to him about uh, the <coughs> Hebrew church to bring a sacrifice of praise to the Lord, which is the fruit of our lips, saying things. <clears throat> if someone loves you, do you want them to keep it a secret or tell you? Tell you, tell me. Tell, tell you. you. Okay. Right. Well, and so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what it is. You're messing things up, Andy. Uh, but we bring a sacrifice of praise to the Lord. He wants us to say it. It is the fruit of our lips. And so, Pastor Brunson, here he's in prison. It's looking like there's no way out. And the Turkish government has got a hold of him, and they're not going to let him go. And they're going to keep him in prison for the rest of his life. Wow. His wife was arrested, but she got out. Let me go, keep going, if you don't mind. And so here she was, uh, he was in prison. It was difficult. It was everything possibly going wrong that could go wrong. And God began to deal with him to be thankful and to praise God and to magnify God. And so he did. And how did how much did he feel better? He didn't. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't feel better. But it kept on doing it anyway. It was, this is what God wants me to do. I'm going to do it. How many of you, when things are going bad, you say, oh, how awful it is for me. You don't, you wouldn't be willing to say, okay, God wants me to be thankful. I need to be <coughs> thankful about it. 
And so he did it every day. He said things of thank you and <coughs> gratitude to Jesus every single day. And he kept on doing it. He had no hope of getting out. It was no way in the world that um, he would get out. And there was a man... And his name was President Donald Trump. Oh, man. Oh. Yeah, man. Hey, hey, Mike, I'm telling a story. Tell a story. I'm telling a story. President Donald Trump was told about it, and he called Erdogan up and said, if you do not let a citizen of the United States out of your prison, I'm going to crash your economy. And Erdogan hesitated at first, but he let him go. Yay. Yay, Trump. He got him out of the prison. I mean, Donald Trump did take up for Americans overseas. And he got Americans, Christians and otherwise, out of jail. But this message about not about him, but the fact that Pastor Brunson was in prison and he he didn't want to thank God, but he thanked God. And he didn't want to thank God, but he thanked God. And he didn't want to thank God, but he thanked God. And what was God doing? On the other side of the world, without his knowledge or understanding, God was working it out. God was working it out. And what made him really get out was the fact that Pastor Brunston kept on thanking God and and thinking of things that he could be thankful for. He was thankful that his wife was in America and had gotten out of jail. There was things to be thankful for. And he could not dwell <coughs> on how miserable his life was. If he had not been thankful, if he had not developed an attitude of Making uh, things better. Do you think God would have worked it out where he would have got out? No. no. If he wasn't going to be thankful. By him being thankful, that was the turning point that turned it around. That was the turning point that turned it around. As a matter of fact, as far as it goes, when President Trump did get a hold of it, it take a, took a very severe threat from President Trump to, to Erwan. He was going to crash their economy. They could have started a huge war. No. It was already there, but if their economy was, uh, was broke, they wouldn't have been able to do anything either because they couldn't pay the soldiers or anything else. <coughs> the thing is, the... Erwan, he <coughs> gave in. He caved in and he let an American out of prison. Yeah. Yeah. And it was because that American, whenever he was in prison, he made a point and a decision to thank God and to praise God. And you think you have it bad. You have never been in a prison like that. There's no one here that's been, and they don't sh serve cheeseburgers in prison. <laughs> no, I heard Turkish prisons were the worst. What? I heard Turkish prisons were the worst. Uh, uh, I'm sure they're on the top, on the top ten, but. Uh, I just have a question. Okay. Uh, it's weird that they would have ISIS prisoners no. locked up alongside a Christian pastor. Okay. I mean. What were they playing both sides or something? What? I don't you know, understand. A lot of people don't understand, uh, like uh, Muslims, uh, Sunni and Shiite fight each other. Yeah, I know that. And uh, a lot of the ISIS people wouldn't fall under Turkey control. They wanted their control. And uh, they wanted their system, and that and that was a 
He's basically a dictator. Uh -huh. So no, it did not go along with him. Uh -huh. But the, the only lesson I wanted out of that you to get out of this <coughs> yeah. is being thankful. Right. In difficult situations. How many times have you heard someone talk about how difficult things were in their lives? <coughs> how many times have a lot? Yes. I've said it myself. And does that really change or help them? No. Nope. Being thankful. And you to be thankful for your situation and what you're in. Can you be thankful? Can you have a spirit of gratitude? A sacrifice. See, with Pastor Brunson, he didn't want to do that. I told you, he didn't feel good after doing it. He still didn't. He was still in the cramped territory. He couldn't hardly do anything. And he was in... And there were people that didn't like him. The food was terrible. And they could take him out and beat him any time they wanted to, as far as that goes, too. And they did that, too. That's the way they treat the prisoners. They had all these difficult things that were going on. But yet, Pastor Bunsen, he put, made a decision that whatever happened, he was going to be thankful. He was going to be... Uh, uh, Telling God how good of a God he was. And that was the doorway. That was the doorway to him being blessed and set free. That was the doorway. And if you're in a situation and it doesn't seem right, I can give you a doorway out of it. The doorway is to praise God and to glorify him and to thank God in the midst of your difficulty. Yeah, what? what I was, was going to say, um, we were at Hershey and we were in an intensive care with my daughter and they had separated us and I couldn't bring her out. You know, she's a big smiley person. Well, I couldn't bring her back to her. And so I put on the praise tape and we started singing and um, they thought I was nuts. The people out, oh, she's in the ICU and praising. And Margaret came back from this, I don't know, they called it a mood disorder that she de developed at some point uh, because they would separate us. And, um, and then after they moved her to a step down, um, the doctor said, we want her, I had prayed with the Assembly God pastor, and um, I thought, well, this doctor's coming in, he's going to say I can't stay in her room anymore. And Because her mental health lawyer then had um, guardianship over her. I had no say. And um, they decided not to operate on her. They thought she was, she was only digesting a teaspoon an hour. And um, anyways, um, he said, I want you to take her to court with you to show the judge how good you are with her. And it was like a Red Sea opening up. And um, when I talked to the social worker, I had this Gloria Raven, she, she lost one and a half year old to a medical mistake. But anyway, she was dro drove up in the rental car and brought the babysitter because I was, you know, intentionally, um, we intended to leave her. Anyway, so long story short, when we asked for provision of somewhere to stay, that social worker said, APS has something over her. You can't take her. And I just wonder if the Lord, I asked the Lord and just pray for me that I can know why. Was it something I did by not just walking out with her? No, that is not my message. My message. Oh, I'm just saying the Lord was opening something up after prayer. Then, you, then, you, then you needed to stay focused on this right here. I am. You don't. No. Well, that's. It's and the then when we now. finally brought her home, we were praising. It, it and is, the Lord, I believe, did that battle to bring. It her. is a sacrifice of praise. That mm -hmm. is my message. And there was nothing and to praise. It's a sacrifice there. of praise that makes difficult situation turned into good situations. It's not a lot of other things can go the other way. Yes, Mike. Oh, it's, 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 it's definitely not on the same scale, but because you can't, you can't compare what he went through with, with, uh, with, with us being plus here, but, but just being able to have 
a, a soup kitchen to go to, we should be praising, we should be blessing God that even if it's not something we like, we should be grateful that, that God's providing for that. There's a lot of other countries, uh, they're starving. They don't have that option. So instead of people complaining and being, oh, I don't like that. They should be grateful. They should be thankful and eat the food that God has given them. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Well, what happens when all hope is gone? Well, that's what had happened to Pastor Brunson. It was a double life sentence. And Turkey at that point was not cooperating with anybody. And there wasn't any country that could have got him out. You know, they let his wife go, and that was something to thank God for. And um, she came back to America and, and would make trips back and forth. But the thing, he was in a very difficult situation, and God spoke to him and told him he had to be thankful. And it was not something he wanted to be thankful for. It was not an opportunity that he would feel good about, and he didn't feel good. But he made himself to be thankful. It was a sacrifice of praise. It is the sacrifice when you don't want to praise God, when you would rather complain, but you make a point you want to sacrifice your praises to God. That is a point of victory and that is that opens up the door for God to do that yes sure yeah I remember I thank God because uh, years ago I had a had a, had a, had, a, had, a, had a, I was thinking God because I had to trick him I got a chicken pot so I'm thanking God because I got I got healed I got I got healed of it within a week but it was supposed to last for like three months that that, that, that condition and the night before I had a dream I was on the he-man doll with a fried chicken skin on the back, <coughs> on the back and that's the only part that the chicken pack a positive effect to me, so I thank God for being healed of it. There you go. That is what God wants us to do. When situations are bad, that's the best time to praise God mm -hmm. for no matter what the situation may be. And if you do so, He will be there for you. That's just the prosper of Satan bringing in bad things. And if you praise God, Satan won't win. God will. Yes, and uh, what you said there is true. Oftentimes in situations like that, we don't make ourselves be thankful. We don't want to give a sacrifice of praise. And there are people in this world that has lost the blessing that God wanted for them because they would not praise God. You would not glorify it, like Mike said. You might be having to go to the soup kitchen and you may not like the food. But it, I, it, I bet you Pastor Brunson would have liked to have that food. Absolutely. <laughs> Whenever he was in prison. It was not nice food. I don't remember what it was. Uh, yeah. Bread and water? Happy food. Happy food. Yeah, yeah. Well, bread might have been an improvement. Yes. Somebody wants prayer, I'll pray for you. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your love and grace. I thank you that you're a wonderful God. You are a wonderful God. And you have such wonderful plans for each and every one that is here. And we need to let go of our own agendas and our own plans and own purposes. And just glorify you. Just be thankful for the, the simple things that you have given us. Because your plan is to increase us even more in all that. And I just pray that your Holy Spirit would be with us and lead us and guide us 
to grace, love, and peace. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, Bobby, we'll give